good afternoon. And um, thank you all for not getting up and leaving. I appreciate that. Uh, my name is Monica Farr. And as Dennis said, I work for the American Welding Society. Uh, my position is uh, Corporate Director of Workforce Development. So uh, I, I head up our workforce development activities. Uh, I actually uh, work for the American Welding Society Foundation. So uh, all of our, our workforce development efforts fall within the foundation. And part of what I'm going to share with you today is some information about uh, what, what we are doing within the foundation um, in the area of workforce development and scholarships, um, which I hope you will all listen to keenly and share with your students. Uh, I am also, as Dennis said, um, the principal investigator of WellDead. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with WellDead, but it's uh, fu been funded by the National Science Foundation. Um, partially. And oh, partially funded by the National Science Foundation. Um, but we're a center focused on welding education and training. Um, so part of what I'm going to share today touches on the collaboration between AWS and WellDead. Uh, but I will not steal Duncan's thunder and talk about Well Dead because he's going to do that uh, after me. So there's a little bit of uh, information. I'm going to start off with saying welding is a super career. Um, I talk with lots of students about career opportunities in welding and uh, love to show them this. Um, young children in particular look a little bit, you know, they, they list a little bit harder when you uh, have Iron Man uh, on the screen. So. Welding is a super career. Um, you've heard from some of our previous speakers about the, the challenges that we face in the industry with um, an aging workforce, with a, uh, with a, a decreasing uh, population of, uh, of young people who are entering the workforce. Um, we have a challenge uh, with the image of our industry. Uh, a lot of young people uh, aren't particularly interested in getting into welding. Um, they don't think of it as a, a viable career opportunity. Um, many parents, uh, including parents who work in manufacturing and in construction, say that they are not encouraging their children to go into uh, manufacturing or into welding. So we certainly have some perception issues um, that we are uh, trying to overcome. I think that... Uh, as Dave shared some recent news headlines, I know Duncan's going to share some, some headlines um, with you. Personally, I have spoken to probably, gosh, 15 or 20 uh, reporters over the course of uh, this year alone. Uh, we are getting a lot of press. There's a lot of news out there, Wall Street Journal, Business Journal, uh, Newsweek, just an overwhelming amount of attention on welding and what a wonderful career it is, uh, the number of jobs that are available, um, the, the, the skills that are necessary, the types of money that you can be made. I mean, we're out there. So I, I do think that we are um, helping with this perception issue. Uh, when, you, when you get some case studies out there that show a, uh, a young woman or show um, a young man who looks a lot like everybody else, um, who works in welding and who is making a lot of money and talks about how much they enjoy their job and how challenging it is, um, that gets young people to think about, hey, maybe I can see myself doing that. So um, I think we're helping with the perception issue, but we still have some challenges ahead of us. Um, talking about how uh, technology is advancing and how the, the skills needed um, by welders in the field today. Um, th those skills are growing. They're changing. Um, those, those welders have to be adaptable. Um, they have to understand technology. They have to be able to uh, work with robotics and computers. Um, those are some other challenges that we face as educators, right? You know, we've got to keep our programs current so that our graduates um, are truly ready to go out into the workforce and, and, and to work for that ever-changing and technology-rich um, industry. OK. The other thing you've heard today is some numbers about the number of weld. Oh, I'm going to go back because I don't want you to look at that while I'm talking. Um, about the number of welders that are going to be needed. 
right? We've heard 400,000. We heard 150,000. We've heard 200,000. Um, so if you're interested in knowing where that data is coming from, it's coming from the American Welding Society and WellDead. We're the ones who have access to um, the economic modeling uh, groups that can project employment uh, into the future. Um, are all of those numbers, 400,000, 200,000, 100,000 correct? Well, at the time that they were quoted, yeah, they were correct. Um, but just like technology's changing, these numbers change very frequently. And uh, the economic modeling group that we work with is able to draw from 50 some uh, data sources and provide us with reports. Um, they could provide us with reports every day and those numbers do fluctuate a bit. So um, I'm gonna share with you some numbers, um, one report from March and one report from May um, today. I, let me say before I share these with you that if you would like any of this information, um, I can provide you the full report. I can provide you with the, the slides that I'm going to share. So um, at the end, I'll, I'll give you my um, email address, and you can let me know if you'd like to see the data. Okay, so that $400,000, or $400,000, 400000 number, where did that come from? Well, Dennis got that here. Okay, so the economic modeling data that, that uh, we look at um, is based on standard occupational codes within the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, all right? If I look at these uh, standard occupational codes here, and these are jobs that uh, we know that uh, require a welding skill, okay? I mean, we have welders, cutters, solders, and brazers. Well, yeah, every, you know, they all have to, have to know welding. And there's currently 342,000 of them um, but there are other jobs like boiler makers, structural metal fabricators and fitters, structural iron and steel workers. Uh, these are welding machine setters and operators and tenders, plumbers, pipe fitters, steam fitters, sheet metal workers. They all need to know something about welding. Now, the plumbers, maybe not so much, but they're in that standard occupational code and I can't pull out just the pipe fitters and the steam fitters. But anyway, these, this shows you here the number of jobs in each of these uh, occupations that exist in 2014, or let me say, as of May 2014. This, based on 50 some different data sources, the employment projection for 2024 in each of these occupational codes is this. This column here is the difference between the jobs today and the jobs in 2014, okay? That's just jobs. So you can see all of them are, are projected to show a growth in the number of actual jobs. Now, what the jobs number does not take into account is any attrition, right? We know that people are aging and they're gonna be retiring and we know that there's attrition. So how many people are we gonna need Right? We don't just need, I mean, yeah, we need to fill these jobs, but there's also people employed today that aren't going to be there come 2024. And that's what this number is down here. So the number of openings between now and 2024 is actually 405,000. Okay? Now, um, the report that I have didn't break out each of the standard occupational codes. However, I had run a separate report for just these two welder codes. And so I know for a fact that the openings for just <laughs> these welders is about 150,000. Just shy of that. 145, to be exact. Um, but that's where, that's where we're getting the 405,000, okay? So yes, we need a lot of people, young people, career changers, et cetera, to move into our industry. Here's some demographics about those seven, those seven standard occupational codes together. If you look at those categories, 96% um, are male, about 4% female. Um, pretty nice distribution here, not, not terrible. Um, it's kind of a, it's, it's a you know, decent bell curve. Um, 
I cannot get from this data the average age of a welder. Um, from 2001, we know that the average age of a welder was 54. Um, we got that information from the U.S. Census Bureau, and we're in the process of trying to get an updated number from them. So I will share that soon. Um, I don't want to quote an average age because I, I mean, 2001 is a little old at this point. And we know we've gotten a lot of new people into the industry. You know, obviously people have gotten older. So um, I don't have that updated information yet. But here's an idea of where um, the percentage of the population falls in those code, in those standard occupational codes. Um, wage data. If I look at just the two welder categories, this is uh, the median wage. Um, and that's, you know, Department of Labor data. And when I show this number, I get an awful lot, especially um, industry that complains and says, there is no way. People make, they make a lot more money than $17 an hour. I'm paying $35 an hour. You know, that's crazy. You tell a young person today that all they're going to make is $17 an hour, and we ain't going to get anybody into our industry. Um, so anecdotally, we can share some, um, some higher wages, but, you know, if you look at um, the DOL data, that unfortunately is what it says. If you look at all of those standard occupational codes together, so the boiler makers and the pipe fitters and the sheet metal workers, it's a little bit higher uh, median wage. Okay, so what industries are employing welders? Okay, so first let me say, if I look at the top industries that are employing all of those occupational codes, the boiler makers and the pipe fitters and all that, the data gets really skewed because it tells you that they're all working in the HVAC industry. Well, okay. So I said, let's just look at those two welder codes, just those two standard occupational codes that are welders. And that tells us that the top industry employing welders is the commercial and industrial machinery and equipment industry. Second, machine shops. Third, fabricated structural metal manufacturing, sheet metal work manufacturing, shipbuilding and repair, oil and gas, field machinery and equipment, and then temporary help. Now that is for you, you know, nationwide. Um, we can get this kind of data for a particular state or for a region of the country, and trust me, it would look a lot different, right? I mean, if we looked at Alabama, I'm sure sheet metal or I'm sure shipbuilding is going to be number one. So we can look at um, and pull data uh, on a much smaller um, regional level. But if I look at the US as a whole, this is the, uh, the top industries. OK, oh, I'm sorry. This, was, this, is, some, this is some data from 2013. I should have taken this slide out. Here's, um, here's the, the current data as of March 2014. Really not a lot different. But in terms of the number of jobs within um, each of those industries, you can see it's a, a little bit different. There are other welding occupations. Um, we've heard some, some stories about, you know, my career. Den Dennis shared, you know, how he's progressed up in his career. And um, certainly at the community college level, you all um, probably have some associate degree programs where your graduates go into the field as technicians, um, maybe not just as a, as a welder, but as a, as a technician. Um, we have inspectors in our industry. We have engineers. Well, if I pull those standard occupational codes, um, we can get a feel for where the, the industry is and the um, job outlook for them as well. Uh, welding engineers fall under the category of materials engineers. Um, you can see that uh, by 2023, there's going to be a projected eight 8,350 of them needed. Uh, if you look at uh, technicians, about 17,500, and inspectors, 142,000. So um, there is certainly a need for individuals in these other welding occupations besides just welder. So um, data such as this, if it helps you, uh, you know, with justifying your program, um, with sharing information with students, parents about why uh, a young person should consider uh, enrolling in your program, 
and uh, graduating and going out into the welding industry, this kind of data, I can get that for you and share it with you. Um, and we do, we do, I mean, I do share that with a lot of, uh, a lot of individuals. Okay, so then you say, all right, so there's going to be all these jobs. Well, what are we doing in education with the pipeline? How are we doing? Are we graduating kids, right, that are going to go to work? Well, over the course of the last four years, um, the American Welding Society and WellDed, in collaboration, have conducted an annual survey. Um, we survey a representative sample from the Welding School Locator Database that AWS um, maintains. That Welding School Locator Database has roughly 37, 3,800 schools in it. Two-year schools, four-year schools, high schools, career tech centers, the, the for-profit kind of schools, um, and others. And we survey a representative sample. Um, we ask a number of questions, one of which, or three of which are, what kind of school are you, secondary or post-secondary? How many students are enrolled in your welding program? How many students completed your welding program this past spring? We survey like now, August, September, October. So how many did you graduate last spring? And here's, and, and, then, and then we're, you know, the, the statisticians extrapolate based on the population, blah, 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 blah. And here's what, what they tell us. The number of students enrolled at the secondary level has grown pretty sizably from the 2009-2010 academic year. The number of completers, we've also seen nice growth. Post-secondary enrollment, it's almost doubled, but it has doubled since 2009 school year. And post-secondary completers has doubled. So, we've got a pipeline of kids out there, right? All right, true. However, what I cannot tell you is what kind of skills these 60,000 kids have and what kind of skills these 23,600 kids have. And the reason I say that is because if you look at the Welding School Locator Database and if you were just to select, a, let's say, a, a high school, for example, they may actually have a welding program. You mentioned you have, one of you mentioned you have a three-year program, right? Your kids are enrolled in three years of welding, uh, right? Okay. Three years in high school. Yeah, three, oh, three oh, years. I a three-year program in high oh, school. Oh, you did a three-year program in high school. Yeah. There are a lot of construction technology programs where the kids get a welding class. There are manufacturing programs where the students go through one or two welding courses. Well, those, are, those students are a part of these numbers. So are these kids truly, these completers, are they truly ready to go out into the workforce as welders? Many of them are not. Um, and unfortunately, I can't break down those that are and those that aren't. But, but we know that we are getting the message out that we need more young people to get into manufacturing, construction, welding evidenced by the number of students who are completing those types of programs. Um, so it's a good news story, but unfortunately I can't tell you that all 60,000 of them are ready to go to work for Vermeer tomorrow. If you could hire, if you could hire yeah. Um, so many of you may have been a part of our survey because I'm sure you're part of the Welding School Locator Database and may have gotten that call, yes. Please, if you get the call, answer the questions because it really makes a difference here for us. It, oh, was it an email? Okay, we have some of both. Well, we, actually, I think we email, and if you don't respond, then we follow up with a call. So um, if, you, if you get that email or and or call, please respond because we really do need the, in, the information um, so that we can help tell our story. Okay, so... 
I want to just share, I don't want to run too much time here, but I, I'm going to quickly share, because I think that was maybe what you all were most interested in, a little bit about what AWS in the foundation, what are we doing um, in the area of workforce development and scholarships, and hopefully you all say I, I knew all of this already, because I've done a good job of sharing it with you in the past. Um, we have a lot of student recruitment resources. If you've seen any of these, Iron Man comic book, we've got videos, we've got a Careers and Welding magazine. They all are available for free. We will send them to you, use them for student recruitment nights, um, have them available in your labs, in your, in your office, hand them out to prospective students. Please help us spread the word about how it, super a welding career really is. We do have um, a couple of websites, the careersinwelding.com website, um, very useful information, updated information about careers in the industry. We have a jobs website uh, where I would encourage your students to go look for jobs, um, see what kind of skills are needed, right, for the jobs in their area so they have an idea of um, what they need to prepare themselves for. Uh, we're active on social media. We've become even more active. The American Welding Society, we've got an outstanding um, social media guy. I don't know what you call those people. Rocky, um, he does a great job of up. So, you know, tell your students to like us. I think that's the right word. Um, we have presentation materials uh, that I'm willing to send you to use for student recruitment events. Um, well, you're hearing today about the support that we give welding education. Um, you're going to hear from Duncan with WeldEd soon. Uh, in the past, we've issued two rounds of workforce development grants. Unfortunately, we do not have a solicitation open right now. Um, but in the past, we've awarded about $108,000 to partnerships between education and industry. Um, we have our careers in welding trailer. Not sure if you've seen it. It's on the road about 20 weeks a year. Uh, this is its third year. Um, it is equipped with all sorts of information about careers in the industry to get kids jazzed and excited about welding and tell the true story of welding. Um, you can find out uh, where we're going to be, our upcoming uh, busy schedule at explorewelding.com. I just want to say a little plug for a couple of events we're going to because I know they're in some of your areas and I could really use your help. So this trailer's on the, on the road about 20 weeks a year. We go to large events. Um, we've, we've mostly have been going to um, state fairs. We hit the road in earnest next weekend. We're at the Ohio State Fair. Then we go to Missouri. If anybody, if you, if any of you are from Missouri, I desperately need some help with volunteers that help us staff the trailer. Um, Talk to the general public, the young kids, their parents who come aboard. Talk to them about careers in the industry. Talk to them about your school and the program you offer. Because if we get them excited about welding and they live in Missouri, they want to know where they can go to school in Missouri. So we would love for you to be there to help us. Um, Missouri, we go to Iowa State Fair. We go to the Colorado State Fair, the Kansas State Fair, the Sunbelt Ag Expo in Georgia. Um, Tulsa, Husker Harvest Days in Nebraska. If any of you live in those states, please see me because we could use your help. Minnesota State Fair, we're going there too. And that's all between now and October. We have a focus on women of gases and welding, where we're really trying to support women who are already in the industry to encourage more young women to enter um, the industry. So uh, those of you women in the room, I'd love for you to get involved in our initiative. Um, it's not, you know, there's a lot of LinkedIn and Facebook kind of um, collaboration, but we welcome you to get involved. The Boy Scout Welding Merit Badge, just want to talk about that briefly. It was introduced in March of 2012. We've already had almost 15,000 boys. Actually, I'm sure we have by now. At the end of 2013, we had 15,000 boys who had received, received the Welding Merit Badge. And this is a wonderful way for you as educators or you as industry to get involved in your community, to host a Welding Merit Badge Day and, and bring the boys in and help them achieve their Welding Merit Badge. They get an opportunity to, to see your school. They get an opportunity to see your plant or facility 
and get them really excited and thinking about welding.